Hello, hello everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Metal Galaxy YouTube channels where we do reviews, interviews and the Metal Galaxy news. Tonight we are back with returning metal veteran Chris Bolton. Now last year we dove into their newest band and release Hell Rider. We learned how two seasoned musicians handled a two totally new band and invented a new genre called Dirty Kickers Metal. Tonight we are going to find out how Grave Digger finds inspiration and creativity after four decades great old school heavy metal from the highest self. And as a bonus, we will learn a thing or two about music production. So welcome, Chris. Can you please introduce us for those who don't know you yet? Good evening. I'm Chris Bodner from Grave Digger. I'm an old fart. I'm a legend of the German heavy metal scene. Awesome. And can you tell us how the story of Grave Digger started? Oh, the Grave Digger started in 1980 in a youth center in, uh, in my hometown, Gladbeck. And we were young, we were 18 years old. And yeah, we only like to do some cover, metal covers like Motorhead or Deep Purple. And we developed our own songs, and that was the birth of Grave Digger in 1980. Awesome, that was way before the time I was born. Yeah. What, what are the trademarks of Cra uh, Gravedigger and how do you think it impacted the German metal scene and beyond? I think we started as a classical heavy metal band. And uh, yeah, we were young, we were always drunken and we only want to play heavy metal. And uh, in 1984, we released our first record, uh, Heavy Metal Breakdown. And it sounds fresh, young, and aggressive uh, for a German band. And I think uh, we are the second uh, league of heavy metal bands from Germany. And the first one is Accept and Scorpions. Yeah, and then it's Running Wild, Grave Digger, Rage, and following from Halloween, Gamma Ray, and Creator, all this band. And I think that we had a great, great influence to the German heavy metal scene because uh, uh, we have a very unique sound. We sound really German, and uh, my uh, my voice is uh, outstanding and uh, rec recognize. You can note it is from the first tone when I'm singing, and I think uh, that's good for a band after 42 years. Yeah, it is. And I would say you are aging as fine wine. Your voice gets better and better. And if we even take your uh, other band, Howrider, it's very lemmy. And here you're doing different, much more melodic. So it's interesting to be able to create just two singing styles different of each other. I'm like a chameleon, you know. I have different colors in my voice. And uh, yes. I can sing with my normal voice. I can scream, have this crunchy, crispy voice. And yeah, from time to time I do that. And from time to time I do the other voice. But for, gra for Grave Digger, it's only a crispy, raspy voice I, I'm doing. And uh, yeah, I think this is the most important trademark of the, of the band. And if we look at instruments, I know you're a singer, but I think you started with the bass. And when you look at Grave Digger, how can we say, apart from your voice, that's Grave Digger? I think Grave Digger is, uh, is guitar and voice. And uh, Grave Digger starts always with a good guitar riff, you know, with a recognizable uh, guitar riff. and that's typical for the band and and then it's coming up with drums and bass and then we start with the voice and normally we have good choruses uh where you heard will hear the first time and uh, you know oh this grave digger and you can sing with us from the second time directly exactly and i would add history as well as you love history and you always added thoughts of it I, I I grew up with all these uh, adventure movies, and uh, I don't know if you know them. They are from the 50s, 60s, 
I'm and, afraid uh, not. I think so, yes. And uh, they were filmed uh, for the first time in Technicolor. It's a very special color. And uh, yeah, I was a big fan of these movies. And uh, I see myself a little bit like Indiana Jones of heavy metal. I'm looking always for adventures. I'm, I'm singing about adventures and telling the people adventures in, uh, with heavy metal music. Amazing. I love Indiana Jones. It's a really nice uh, reference. When I'm going to listen to Grave Digger, I'm going to search for Indiana Jones there. For sure. Grave Digger is well known for brain history alive. Why did you chose to explore Templars once again? Uh, the first time when we deal with the Templars was uh, Night of the Cross. And this was a, a more or less a historical concept, you know. And uh, the new one is uh, dealing with the mites, the legends, and the secrets of uh, the Night Templars. And uh, there's a lot of space in these stories. Also space for my own ideas, bringing it in, my own view. And uh, yeah, as I told you before, I'm telling adventures. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking always for good uh, lyrics and... Uh, for stories for my lyrics and yeah that's good and uh that makes sense and what drew you partly to the templars why do you love them so much this time period because the might and the legend behind this order is uh yeah remarkable it's uh it's so mystic and uh they are so cruel stories and untold stories and uh it's uh yeah, it's fascinating. It, it was a fascinating time. How they grow up as a, as a, as a group of a Christian militia, militia, you know, and going stronger and stronger and got so much power. At the end, they got so much power that the Pope and uh, the king in, in, in France and uh, in Spain, they were afraid of this order, you know, of the Knight Templars. And they say it, oh, they have unholy rites. They pray for for uh, for demons and uh, it's, it's like Baphomet. And then they start some kind of inquisition, you know. And they killed a lot of them. And uh, yeah, yeah. And that was really strong. And as a small group going up, going bigger, 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 with the support of the of the of the church, you know. And then it was too big. And the church tried to stop them, you know. And we never know what happened with the Templar uh, treasure. It's like hidden somewhere to be discovered, hopefully. Yeah, nobody knows what happened in the end because it was uh, like, a, like a secret organization, you know. Um, a lot of people say they, they are the keeper of the Holy Grail, you know. But what is a grail? As I mention indiana jones again yeah. is it a wooden cup or is it uh, some kind of uh, a diamonds a golden cup with diamonds around is it the blood of jesus or not or give it eternal life yes or no who knows Exactly. Thank you for uh, sharing this story. Let's go now to a bit more uh, musical part. Last time we spoke about the differences between Hellrider and Gravedigger. According to you, Gravedigger has a very divine sound and dedicated fan base. For this reason, there is a bit less freedom on experimentation. Yet this album offers some fresh ideas, such as you singing in Greek. Can you give a few examples of new musical ideas you had for this album? And how did you get the creativity to just think outside the box? If you are an artist and uh, you're growing older, older like me, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I can't stop working. I'm, I'm singing here in my studio nearly every day. I'm thinking about new lyrics. I'm thinking about uh, new music. And uh, so I have different parts in my life. You know, I have Gravedigger, which is the main part of, of my life. And uh, in the moment, I'm working on a solo album because uh, I want to do something different to Hellrider and Gravedigger. 
Amazing. So we are having a third project. Wow. Yes. Yeah, it's a solo project with uh, totally different musicians. And uh, yes, I, we are in the, in the recording mood in the moment. Uh, we are doing the recordings. And I think we finish at the uh, beginning of uh, November, I think. So uh, so we have Hellrider. It is a project with Axel together, going back to the punk and the hard rock roots of our own. Then we have Gravedigger, which is a main project for 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 42 years now and then we have next year we have the Chris Baldner solo project with different nice. musicians and uh, yeah I can't I have a lot of creativity and I want to give it to the people and I want to do it by myself and I'm writing songs with my son now and uh, he's doing a totally different music like me he is uh, doing music like Pink Floyd or Frank Zappa and we're working together now and mixing his songs and uh, help him. And he will also play a guitar solo on my solo album. Amazing. That sounds great to just be able to create with your family, but as well explore new things. That's amazing. And if we go back to Great Digger, what would you say? What surprises can we hear? For example, for me, a big surprise was you singing in Greek, but any other new things we can explore in Symbol of Eternity? I think at first, Symbol of Eternity sounds really fresh and, uh, yes. and uh, young, I think. Uh, it, it got back the... Uh, the aggressive part of Grave Digger and uh, the harder guitars and uh, less keyboards at the end and uh, the sound is not so polished like the ones before. It sounds more like a, like a studio live album mixed uh, together. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a step forward for the band. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, there's more to come, definitely. Looking forward to it, and I certainly agree. When I was listening, it looked fresh, but not too modern, like modern bands like Hobbit. It still had the uh, 80s sound, uh, like very strongly. So, yeah, that Great. is uh, something because the guitar sound is very uh, 80s, you know, you can feel and hear the distortion of the guitar, and uh, uh, that is something very important. Great. We have here Gabriel McPollin saying the following about uh, Symbol of Eternity. Grey Digger have done it again. I love the heavy metal mix with historical content. Yeah, that is something we, we are used to and we will carry on. This, uh, I think the next one will be on also a concept CD. I don't know what about, but uh, we are going, going this way because it fits very well to our music and... Uh, at the end, it uh, has a face for the band, you know. Great. And uh, let's go back to the Greek uh, song. How did you approach singing this in Greek? It's a, it's a, it's a good story because in '94, uh, I was traveling to a small island in Greece called uh, Lefkava. And... Uh, there I met some Greek friends, and uh, in the evening we went out uh, to a little soccer stadium, and Vasilis Papakotsatino was playing there. And there were around 2,000 people. That was uh, The sun was going down. It was a smooth wind coming up, and everything was really, really quiet and passionate there. And uh, as an anchor, he played uh, Helas Helas, and I was, wow, what that? That's a great song. And everybody was singing. And from this moment on, we decided to put this one in our live set. And now it is the first time that I sing in, in the original Greek language. And the original singer, Vasilis, is doing that with me together. And I think it has this good hard rock vibe, you know? It has, and it's a great song. But if I'm correct, you never spoke Greece, correct? I speak a little bit Greek, but uh, yeah, what can I tell you? It's uh, it, it was uh, a great experience, and uh, it was hard. I, I, it was a one and a half day 
training and recordings and to discuss it with my uh, friend Lia Pakis from Mystic Prophecy. He's a Greek guy and yeah, he teach me and practice with me. And uh, when he said, oh, that's good, man, <laughs> then it was finished. Amazing. So if I may ask, how many times did you have to re-record? Because I imagine it's much harder than English. Yeah, to record it, it is, it's on one time you can speak it, yeah, you can speak the language, but to sing a language is more difficult. And uh, that was the biggest challenge for me. Amazing. Oh, how many times was the song re-recorded and re a uh, long time? It was a lot. 100, so 100 120 times, definitely. Well, it paid off in the end, and I would love to hear more uh, Greek song. It's amazing. <laughs> I don't think that I will do it again. <laughs> One time for two. So we have here Nick Hetz saying, Hellas. And as well, also Greek label that so that helps. Yes, for sure. Akis Kosmidis, the owner of the label, he makes a contact to the management of Facilis, and uh, then I contact him, and uh, he was uh, really, really nice, and said, "Yeah, let's do it." And it was totally uncomplicated, and I think he liked it. Great story about uh, the song. It's my favorite uh, one, certainly. Hmm. Uh, if I'm correct, we spoke a bit about music production in our last interview. And this album is produced by your musical production. How do you think this experience helped to get Great Digger on a higher level? And how challenging was it? After all these years, you know. Um, only two years sitting beside the sound engineers and uh, and uh, looking to the monitors and to the mixing consoles and everything. I, I tried to do it by myself. During the pandemic, I built up here in my house a studio and make a lot of practice, a lot of exercises and started with smaller productions. And uh, last year, September, October, I started with a new grave digger. I recorded the vocals here, did the mix here and also the mastering. And uh, yeah, I'm really proud because you can tell it to somebody, uh, you can, how they should do it. But at the end, it's different when it, when you do it by yourself, you know? So uh, I love it so much to do it. And uh, I, since then I did a lot of different uh, mixing and masterings. Uh, also I did the new White Skull and uh, I will do it also with my solo project. And yes, I'm a happy guy. Yes, yeah, certainly. Like if I look at the musical product, it sounds so sophisticated, this album. And as you've mentioned, it's fresh. It really, I think, paid off in the end to do it uh, yourself. Four decades of uh, heavy metal. It's a long time, as you said uh, yourself, Chris. Time is ticking away. Any regrets or things you still would like to do? Well, we know the solo project. Uh, we know you're busy with Hellrider, but anything else? No, I have a lot of two because I have mm -hmm. another mix, uh, mix here uh, for another band uh, here near my hometown. And I, I like to, to work with bands to give them a little bit of my experience, uh, to help them, support them. And anyway, I I help them with cover artists and all them. I give them my network, you know, my my uh, my, my band network and everything. So uh, I have a lot to do, and uh, I start my every morning. I start with golf, playing golf, and then I go back to my studio working and uh, doing all, a lot of production for the live shows for Grave Digger and. There is a lot of work. Certainly, I can believe that, and it's amazing and great that you are passing your experience like to the younger generation. So you have influenced, shaped, uh, helped to shape a general, and now you're just passing the knowledge over. It's a great thing. 
which band did you mix and master or work together on some songs? Oh, I did that uh, a lot of uh, bands in, in, in the past and uh, and recently and when... I did also a song with White Skull together. I did um, the mix and the mastering. The announcement will come tomorrow. They will be also at the Raw Records. And yes, I'm I'm a busy man. I'm doing cool. the whole time. I'm doing music. When I was at home after playing golf, <laughs> I start here, and uh, my day is is filled with music and creativity, and I enjoy it a lot. I'm healthy, a happy Amazing. guy. Amazing. We, I will look into the music and we will share uh, something about your project. In here we have a comment. White School, great Italian band. For sure. Now they sound really good. With your help? Yeah. And the new album is wirklich outstanding. And uh, they are friends from mine uh, since, uh, since 20 years. And... Uh, no, but the new album sounds like the graphic album sounds really fresh and good ideas. And Federica is an awesome singer, and now the, she sounds like Lemmy and mixed with uh, the guy from Wars. Gregor, I love uh, Lemmy, it's amazing. Back to Great Digger. So, Chris, you write about the deepest and darkest desires in us. What lyrics did you like most to write in Symbol of Eternity? Uh, I think it was uh, Hell is My Purgatory. I love it, my favorite one. Yeah, Hell is My Purgatory. The lyrics are so deep and so so dark, and uh, it's a fight with your with your inner demons. That is uh, the story behind that. You know? Because Hugo de Payens was one of the grandmasters of the Templars, and he was burned at the uh, on a cross at the end, and. In the moment when he was burnt, uh, he... they accuse him that he deal with the devil, you know. And uh, now that he was burnt in the purgatory, in his own purgatory, he was dealing with his demons. And, uh, well, that's that's cool. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly dark and great one. And uh, which was then the, your favorite video to shoot? Was it this one because of the darkness or any other uh, video that you like? From the new record or? New record, Symbol of Eternity. We only did two uh, uh, normal videos, uh, King of the Kings and uh, Hell is My Purgatory. We made them on the same day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the story behind that, that was the worst day in the whole year. It was in the end of March, and we mm -hmm. we filmed that in a in a part of Germany called Sauerland. It was it was mountains, everything, and it was a a castle on the hill, and it starts snowing in the morning, and it starts snowing three days, you know, and it was so Crazy. cold, and uh, we were freezing and wet and everything, but uh, the atmosphere is very authentic and uh, that's yeah. the reason why they look really awesome the videos i like both they're quite r realistic you were literally suffer suffering in the cold there and i think it makes it great because everything is it isn't acting it's just like you are into the story and yeah i think the bear conditions helped yeah for sure but uh, it was hard the filming was really hard I can believe it, but in the end, I think it paid off like it's a great one. If you oh. order snow and mm -hmm. you you have to buy it like uh, like uh, foul snow, you know, you know what I mean? Then it's really expensive and we got it for free, you know, that is a great gift. <laughs> yeah, it's great. great. Um, okay, let's go now to the comments. We are almost uh, at the end. Gabriel asking, he wants to know more about Hellrider. I would like to know, uh, could you ask Chris, will there be another Hellrider album at some states? Not in the moment. It, it, I don't know if it will 
be another one, but in the moment not. Great. So we have the solo project to look forward to and probably Grave Digger at some stage. For sure. Grave Digger will never stop. Awesome. It's where it all began and heavy met. Looking forward to that. So we have here a question. Naked. Hello, Chris. Souvlaki or pizza? Souvlaki on a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Souvlaki or pizza? One of the two. No, I like... Uh... I like both. When I'm in Greece, I I eat uh, Greek food, and I love it. Uh, I adore that. And uh, but at home, I often also eat pizza. But awesome. I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, of the grill. You know, I have a gas grill here, and I'm grilling nearly every day. Bratwurst. I love it. <laughs> you are grilling bratwurst, the German one. Bratwurst, yes. Today I had two bratwurst. Amazing. So maybe that's the secret of your voice and being so healthy. <laughs> uh, anything we missed out on symbol of eternity tonight? No, everything fine. I think we, we got a go, good overview over that album, yeah? Certainly we got the lyrics, musical part and the videos, so... Yeah, I think that gave a good overview. We have a last one question for tonight. How was the rehearsal for Walk in 2020 with the Pipes Orchestra? The gig was great. The rehearsal was only with three Pipers, not with 60, you know, because 60 in a rehearsal room will kill you, definitely. <laughs> At the end, uh, the bagpipe uh, is a war instrument. It was used uh, in, in the Middle Ages to, to make noise you know to to make the the enemies uh, fear bring them fear and uh, it was amazing to use a lot of pipers on stage uh, in Wacken and uh, yeah it was a great 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 experience amazing so I haven't seen I had a chance to see great life so you always use pipers or only for special occasions only for the special occasions. We had this uh, three times this year uh, on Rock Heart Festival, Rock Hearts Festival, and on Wacken. And uh, yeah, let's see what the future will bring. So, in, in the moment, I don't know, but uh, it's not a normal a Grave Digger life tool we use. You know. Amazing. This is on my bucket list. And as you say, time is ticking away. I've marked it now with big letters to hopefully see you soon uh, with Pipers. Great. So we have Nick Hetz asking plans for tour. Yeah, we have planned a tour in uh, in uh, next year, uh, in January, especially here in Germany and Switzerland. Let's see, fingers crossed that it will happen. But uh, yeah, and then we have uh, starting with the festivals again in uh, March next year. And then end of April, we go to uh, South America. Yeah, and we are booked for several... Uh, festivals nice and i think and you come back to belgium too amazing but if i'm correct grave digger never crosses the channel like uk or ireland uk it's difficult for grave digger but let's see nobody knows you know amazing if you hope the new to see... album got a really good uh, feedback and uh, perhaps it brings some uh, possible other countries again back to, to our live set, you know. Amazing. We would love to see her in Dublin. And I think there is a big fan base to create the grant. We will bring it to a yeah, big crowd. Island, I think so. Yeah, it's That'd always great uh, good. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. So thank you, Chris, uh, for joining thank us to, to today and telling us about four decades of old school heavy metal and your latest album, Symbol of Eternity. Thanks for Rock of Angel Records. As well, we want to thank our collaborators for prom promoting the event. We all want to thank everyone who is watching this video, sharing and liking. And for those who want to have a copy of Symbol of Eternity, links are below. Like and subscribe as we have more interesting content coming soon. So I'm giving word to Chris to round up the interview. Thank you very much, my friends. Enjoy Symbol of Eternity. 
It's one of the best Gravedigger albums so far. Enjoy it and stay metal. Certainly. So see you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.